Hey listeners, I'm Christy. And I'm Melissa. And this is Buried Motives, where we dig deep into the details of some of the most gruesome dirtbag murderers. She said she enjoyed hurting things that can't fight back. Like if you were only to look at what she did later on and not know any of that history, she would appear like off the wall crazy. Oh, 100%. She struck him on the back of his head with a frying pan, almost killing him and was hospitalized for a severely fractured skull. She fractured his skull. She fractured his skull. Wow. So the movie Tangled was right. Frying pans are dangerous. They are. He feels like he is totally justified in the murder that he commits. Even after he's convicted, he feels justified. Oh, yeah. To this day. That's a confident dirtbag right there. That's right. He believes that his victim had it coming. Join us each Thursday as we unearth the dirtbags that live among us and the motives buried there. Hope you join us as we exhume the truth. I have no desire to reform myself. My only desire is to reform people who try to reform me. And I believe that the only way to reform people is to kill them. everybody welcome to another episode of crimes killers cults and fear and i swear if technical difficulties were an alcoholic beverage we'd both be dead by now (laughs) yeah right (laughs) just two crazy florida men drinking beer talking about true crime and having technical difficulties and having technical difficulties (laughs) as usual (laughs) But yeah, that's the story of our life, bro. Yep, we have we haven't had one start off this bad in a while. This is this is our this is the second go at at this episode. <laughs> You're I'm not supposed you, to tell them our secrets, man. <laughs> it's it's Pan's Ren's ghost. Yep, that's what you get for pushing me aside for that slave master <laughs> baker. Uh, well, you know. Anyway, that's Todd. And that's Bill. And what are you drinking, Todd? Uh, well, they kind of saw it already, but yeah. Rum and Coke in my powder blue sippy cup. I'm drinking Bud Light in a brown bottle with a blue label. I was going to get Bud Light, but my dumbass forgot to get beer. Anyway. Surprise, surprise. Yep. Uh, got a little bit of housekeeping to do. A little bit of a do. A little bit of a do. Okay, um, this is part one of a three-part episode on Carl Pan's Round. And, um, you know, and the reason being, I just in part one, I have 22 pages of notes. And at the end of 22 pages of notes, he's only 19 years old. <laughs> Damn. No way we get this done in one episode. And to be honest with you, there's no way we get it done in two episodes. <laughs> not, not, the, not the way we digress, no. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we didn't digress, I mean... You know, it's just, there's, there's just so much information to unpack. This is, you know, he's, you know, it's, it's just, it is what it is. But, um, right. but this episode's going to come out. Well, well, it doesn't matter. <sighs> okay. If you're, if you're listening to this when the episode comes out, you're listening to it on Thursday. When, when you normally do it on Friday, because, fr- because on Friday we're going to be at CrimeCon and I just don't want to, you know, I, I'm not going to have time to, mess with releasing the episode we're gonna you're gonna get this one you know but if you are listening and you are at crime con find us we're we'll be walking around the ckcb t-shirts and um and we'll you know we'll be you know, talking we'll be talking to whoever wants to talk to us and everything we'll probably be co- coming up to you well, hey man listen to our podcast but <laughs> because they because they didn't invite us we bought tickets yeah we had to pay so <laughs> but but the thing is is as the um 
at the end of the, you know, we're, uh, one of the nights, either Friday night or Saturday night, we're going to um, record an episode. It's not going to be part two of Pan's Ram. It's going to be something else. But don't worry. It's going to be it's like a release as a special episode. Pan's Ram will still come. Pan's Ram part two will still come out um, the following Friday as as normal. Yep. But we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're, we're going to have a, a guest with us, and we're either going to be doing it in uh, uh, one of our hotel rooms, or if they let us, we're going to set up like in the corner of, of the lounge or something like that if they let us, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. Um, it would be awesome if they would. But um, So we are going to have um, – we're going to have a guest in there with us. We're going to have four microphones set up. And the the guest is um is the Broken System podcast with Robert um damn it <laughs> with Ro- Robert Palmer with Robert Palmer right on and he's he's going to be you know doing it with us and everything but we're going to have another microphone whether it's in the lounge or whether it's in one of our hotel rooms you know we're going to be inviting people to come and you know watch us as, as we do it and at this episode that we're doing i'm not going to tell you which one it is but at the end of it the, the, this is one of those cases that sparked a nationwide debate about vigilantism so at the end of the episode we're going to talk about vigilantism you know pros and cons <laughs> good or bad whatever so it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you're there and you want to get in on it, we'll have a fourth microphone set up to where you can just get up and ask a question or make a comment or whatever. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun, but we're going to be flying by, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be winging it. <laughs> so, Indeed. so, but what basically, you know, if you want to meet up with us, send us a message on either Facebook uh, or Twitter or Instagram and, you know, send us an actual message. That way we get a notification like immediately. And then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll set it, you know, we'll, we'll set up something, you know, meet up, meet up with you if you want to grab a drink or something like that, or just shoot the shit if you don't drink, but that's fine too. Well, that's so, where you'll find me. I'll probably be at a bar most of the time. <laughs> oh man. But, um, so, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting weekend. We're hoping to meet like a lot of our fans, you know, or fans, I don't like using that word. A lot uh, will be meet, hopefully we'll be meeting some of our listeners, yes. like people, you know, like OG listeners and everything that have been with us since day one or whatever. <laughs> you know, and, if, and, and if you found our podcast or the first ones, God bless you. And you, you know, if you're still we'll here, buy, yeah, we'll we'll buy you a beer. Great. I can't say that because everybody, no, everybody. Well, I've been listening since the first episode. Well, there yeah, will be no a quiz. Shit. There be will a be a quiz. quiz. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, um, you know, I don't have any more ado. So, do you? I actually have a do today? You have a do? Yes, I do. do. You? I do. You have a do? I do. Holy crap! I can't remember if we talked about it on the podcast or if it was just like before and after and during the week. But I've been needing to get a new phone. My phone's been, let's just say. Uncooperative. <laughs> so I finally went out yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, Friday. I went out Friday and I got a new phone. I have a brand new phone. Oops. Holy crap. Look, you can that's... see the reflection on my computer screen in it. <laughs> cool. Anyway, that's my ado for this week. Oh, and, and that, and I'm probably setting up my studio tomorrow. Well, I hope you do. The second oh. sign of the apocalypse. Yeah. Thank you. So anyway, let's jump into this one because Absolutely. we got we got a, we got a little ways to go, but you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, but still, Car- Carl Panzram was a monster. He was probably the absolute scariest of all serial killers, simply because he didn't give a damn about anyone. If he didn't like you, he'd kill you. Yeah. If he did like you, he'd kill you. <laughs> But he probably only liked two people as an entire in his entire life, and he didn't kill those two people. So do whatever you want to with that. Yes, take that as you will. One of them wound up going to prison for life. Oh, so he didn't have a chance to kill that guy. <laughs> oh, so it's so it's not that he didn't kill him because he 
like them more than other people. He just didn't get a chance to. Right. And the other, the other guy, he'll pro- probably hear about him in part three. He probably wanted, he, he probably thought about killing this guy, but he didn't. But if, if he could have, he would have killed every human on the entire planet. And he even said that in his biography. Oh, so he thought he was Thanos then, huh? No, wait, no. Thanos only wanted to kill half of the people. That's right. No, and he wanted to kill every single one of them just because he hated people. Dude, I hate people and I don't want to kill anybody. Uh, he, you, you didn't have his childhood. <laughs> True. We've discussed this already. <laughs> But he was clearly a product of nurture, and he was probably and he was he was probably honestly the most clear cut example of nurture that there ever was. Okay. Uh, he was a huge man, like over six feet tall, and he was all pure muscle. Like Chuck Norris would flinch if if Panzram was coming at him. <laughs> That's saying a lot. Yeah, and the the reason Chuck that he Norris got ain't this afraid flinch, of nothing. <laughs> Uh, but the, the reason he got this way is because he in, endured a harsh upbringing followed by literal torture in schools and correction correction institutes, and all before he was 15 years old. Um, he was never afraid of prison because what else could they do to him that hadn't already been done? I mean, this sounds familiar. Well, there's there are similarities between him and like um, Pee Wee Gaskins or whatever. But um, Carl Panzram was a was borderline genius. Right. So, but you know, but Pee Wee Pee Wee Gaskins and Henry Henry Lee Lucas, they all had shitty childhoods and everything. But they were both dumbasses. Panzram was not. <laughs> they were both dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, I love it. Anyway, but but seriously, a, a smart serial killer that that's even scarier. Um. Yes. Yes. Indeed. But um, yes, Panzram was one of the scariest and the worst. But he also has one of the most interesting stories that there are, in my opinion, because of, you know, like I said, this is our first three-part episode. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yep. the primary source of this is Ryan Green's book, Kill Them All, a true story of revenge, or of abuse, revenge, and the making of a monster, along with Wiki in an article or, or two. So enough setup. So let's just get to it. Yes, let's get to it. Carl Panzram, he was born June 28th, 1891 in East Forks, Minnesota. Okay. He was the youngest out of eight boys. Now, how you get eight children and all eight of them are boys, I don't know how that's possible. But, you know. Yeah, the odds are against it, but apparently yeah. it happens. But his parents, um, Johan and Mathilda, they were, um, they were Want Prussian. To start a football team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was the first roster of the Vikings? Gonna have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> so many Panzerams are on it. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I'll tell you what, his last name should have been Panzer. P-A-N-Z-E-R. <laughs> but uh, so, dude, if he was born in 1891 they, I don't know if they were doing the short name things to sound cooler <laughs> no but well and plus the, the Panzer wasn't yet a thing because World War One hadn't even happened yet at that point true but um, soon they moved to Warren Minnesota and where they were granted land by the government oh, okay uh he wasn't particularly singled out for abuse by his parents, but the Panzerim had a huge farm that needed maintaining, and the kids at, t- at that time, they were just free farm labor and not much else. Except the Panzerams were understaffed, even with eight kids, and so Carl was fast-tracked to do the work. You know, the other kids, you know, they they didn't, they didn't started later in their lives than Carl did, but they fast-tracked Carl. Yeah, the, um, young, the, the youngest and the strongest. Well, he wasn't the strongest at this point yet. He was five when he started when they had him out there for the first time. Okay, well, just the youngest then, because yeah. you don't know no better. Yeah. So, um, the Panzerams they didn't really have the experience to to work the land properly. The U.S. government at the time was granting land to immigrants, just basically saying, "Here you go, good luck." <laughs> Jesus. But their heart was in the right place. 
Yeah. But I mean, they can't. They, but I mean, I, I'm looking at this from the government's point of view. They can't sit there and allocate funds to go out and train these people to to do it. It's like, here you go, use it or don't. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh boy. Either either make it work or don't. So I, I can I can see the government side in this because then again, you know, they, they'd they'd go bankrupt if they had to train everybody. So it's just basically luck of the draw. Whoever did it, whoever whoever made it work, great. Whoever didn't, it sucks to be you. Yeah, right. Hey, here's a bunch of land. Sink or swim. There you go. Basically. Anyway. So they weren't doing very well. But um, so each new kid would be a new worker, but they were also each kid was also a new mouth to feed. So and they had multiple failed harvests, and the fact that they really didn't know what they were doing um, could have had something to do with why the work was so hard. Yeah, because the the wrong way of doing something is never the easy way. <laughs> true, true that. <laughs> not if you want it to work. <laughs> yeah, not if you want it to work. Oh, one time I was doing some work on an old van that I had and everything. I was um, roommates with a mutual friend and um, our old bro- our old drummer, Brian showed up and everything. And, I, and he's like watching me and it's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing this, this, and this, and this, um, my, but my friend, you know, my, our, our mutual friend, my roommate walks out. He goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't remember exactly what I was doing at the, at that point. But, um, and then he, he looks over at Brian and he says, there's, there's three ways of doing things. There's the easy way, there's a the hard way, and then there's Bill's way, which is the really <laughs> hard way. <laughs> Shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there's my way, which is probably even harder than all of those. Yeah, because by the time you get to it, you'll be in a wheelchair. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> I do, but I I was not late to a gig, but I got there later than I thought I was going to be. And uh, all, all my band members were like, dude, you're going to be late to your own funeral. I'm like, man, I've been saying that shit for years. Of course, <laughs> I'm going to be late to my own funeral. I'm late everywhere. I think I even said that on a podcast episode too. You probably did because it's the truth that it's I will be late to my own funeral. It's actually going <laughs> to be um uh what do they call that? Not your will so much. Anyway, doesn't matter. Moving on. <laughs> so, um, but by the time Carl was five years old, he was out doing the same backbreaking work that his dad and seven brothers were doing. And Johan really didn't care about school. But the state around that time made it a law that all kids must attend school from age five on. <clears throat> because the but government knows what's right for you. Yeah. But instead of cutting Carl and his brother's working hours, Johan cut sleep time. Oh. So before too long, Carl and his brothers were only getting about two or three hours of sleep per night. I know what that's like. (laughs) Literal literal slave labor. Because they'd get home from school and they'd be working like late into the, um, late into, you know, it's freaking Mm -hmm. nighttime out there and they're out there plowing, you know, plowing fields and stuff like that. But of course, the exhaustion began to take its toll. It's, 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 (sighs) It's. T- <laughs> oh, I love it when you get tongue tied on the simple words. <laughs> <laughs> of course, exhaustion began to take its toll on Carl, and his grades began to slip, and it got worse. You know, and he'd rarely speak, and he he would only speak when spoken to, and and even then, he'd just kind of look at you with a blank stare, like, or, or excuse me. Hey. <laughs> but th- this is this is common with kids that suffer physical or sexual abuse. But while none of that was happening, the amount of work that he was forced to do basically had the same effect. That oh, I imagine that, that it would. So even at school, he was too tired to play with the other kids, and by the time he was seven, he was practically a zombie. But keep in mind, like I said, his brothers hadn't endured this because they weren't required to go 
by law to go to school at the time, and therefore they had gotten more sleep and were able to gradually get used to the intense workload. This is all being thrust on Carl at the same time when he started working on the farm. So, he, you know, the rules are different for Carl. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And while they were trying unsus- un- un- unsuccessfully to push out a, a harvest in the spring and the summer, Carl, you know, the, Carl was out in the elements most of the day, but the work didn't slow down in the winter. They had to get their land to be fertile in the hopes that it would be better the next season. So Carl was out in the bitter Minnesota cold winters most of the day and night as well, which resulted in a bad cough that never went away. More than likely a scratchy voice. <laughs> and and he also got a bad ear infection, among other minor ailments. The um, the ear infection swelled up so bad that it made Carl deaf in, in the ear. It Ooh. also affected his equilibrium, and he wasn't able to walk straight. And you know, his family couldn't afford to take him to the doctor, so they decided to fix him themselves. Uh-oh. This this can't end well. It does not. It does not. Yeah, <laughs> I I did not. Yeah, I mean that that was that was an easy one to figure out. <laughs> one night, the entire family held Carl down on a table, and his father tried to pierce the infection with a kitchen knife. Oh. Luckily, Carl passed out from the pain very early into the session, and after it was over, he was awakened by um, his father pouring hot water into his ear to flush it out. Ouch! Yeah. And I got, I got to, I got to say, just like I, I'm, I'm using Ryan Green's book for this, but Ryan Green got the majority of the the content and everything from. Pan's Ram's bio, uh, from his biography. Oh, all right. So, um, his biography was based on an interview that he gave to a prison guard. So, um, that he kind of developed a an acquaintance with. Not, not. I wouldn't call it a friendship, but uh, you know, just like, a, all right, I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the people in here, I pick you. Don't you happy? Dude, you are not far off. You are not far off at all. I am just dead serious. Did you go listen to a Panzeram podcast? Well, dude, it's easy to do that. <laughs> it's all of you singing metal backup vocals. <laughs> no, I'm talking about how I, I picked you. You should, you know, you should feel, you know, lucky oh, or whatever. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. No, I thought you meant his voice. Oh, so I mean, I nailed. Oh, shoot. That's two I nailed. Yeah. Like straight out the gate, you didn't even ask me a question. <laughs> no, but but that'll be in part three. Okay. <laughs> but I had to give you props on that one because you freaking you you're pretty close to nailed that one. Right on. I didn't even know it was a test. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> Neither did you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> well, as everybody knows, Bill always asks me questions like, guess what happened? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> apparently, so, um, apparently, I'm guessing and I don't even have to be asked. <laughs> Adrenaline kicked in and Carl broke free of his brothers who were holding him down. And he tried and, you know, and, and he tried to run off and he fought several of his brothers who tried to restrain him. And as he was fighting, they backed off. Oh, freaking seven years old. He's already a badass. Hell yeah. He was in a frenzy, and the mo- and modern doctors speculate that this stupid attempt at surgery may have damaged his brain in an area that had to do with impulse control. Oh. So, um, from kinda that like, day on... Kind of like a lobotomy? Yeah, but a lobotomy is in yeah, your forehead. Know, but, but, but yeah. I, you know, I didn't yeah. say kind of a, a similar thing. Yeah, Perhaps. Like, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. You I just play with You know what? Head. His father probably thought, it's like, oh, well, they do a lobotomy and they work. We'll just do one a lo- a lobotomy in his ear. Yeah, we'll just lobotomize this infection. <laughs> Jesus, that's... Uh, anyway, moving on. Yeah, that's crazy. 
But um, from that day on, Carl was wild and violent. And if he said something he didn't like, he would fight you. But Carl ultimately was hospitalized because the infection was still there and it was spreading. Oh. So Carl stayed in the hospital for a couple of weeks for the for a treatment and to recover. And after this, the cost of the hospital stay bankrupted Johan and some and some of his older brothers, you know, the ones that were old enough to go out and live on their own, they they jumped ship. <laughs> they just fucked this we're out. <laughs> yeah. And Carl Carl was becoming a, a holy terror. He flat out refused to do farm work and and Johan ultimately abandoned his, his wife, Carl, and the other sons who weren't yet old enough to so, fuck off on their own. <laughs> right. So he did. <laughs> that's great. I mean, not really. That's terrible, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So he's, he's like, just, fuck it. The, these, these kids left. Why, why am I still doing here? I'm out too. Peace. Yeah. Wow. Then he made his way to Indiana where he met a charming woman named Belle. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> oh, dude, I was going to do it, but I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't going to steal your thunder on that one. <laughs> but Carl decided to do his own thing and, and took in, you know, you know he, he just ran away and he took in whatever sights that he could see, you know, we're off to see you to see to see what we can see. <laughs> but but he um his temper was still getting worse. By now, um Carl was around nine or ten years old. His first arrest came take a guess. What do you mean? What was he arrested for? Um I don't know. What did he do? Beat up somebody? Well he did, but that's not what he was arrested for. Oh, I don't know. What do you do? He killed. I mean, I don't even want to say that. Public intoxication. At 10, 10 years, years old? old? Yeah. In, what, he was born in 1891, you said? So in 1901? Yeah, so this is 1901. He's arrested, you know, for public intoxication. Okay. See, what had happened was Carl um, had a stash that he, a stash of liquor that he'd been swiping from his father. And when, um, and when his father split, Carl swiped the rest of it. As you would at ten years old, yeah, or however however old he was when that happened, ten, nine or ten. But um, well, actually, this no, this was earlier because Carl's dad split when he was like eight. So, so, so he, he had he had quite an extensive collection of booze. Yeah. Um, but, okay. but but he was also supplied by you know some of the local winos in the area. But police <laughs> the local winos. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, all right. <laughs> the police were initially called because Carl had been beating up two boys that were several several years older than he was, and he was beating them both up. You know, but they noticed that when they noticed that he was drunk, they arrested him. And yeah, they they weren't gonna they weren't gonna arrest him, but it was like that whiskey I smell in your breath. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! All right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> he was released to his mother, but he wound up back with the winos, and he was in pain. But alcohol was the only thing that made the pain go away. And um, I know that feeling. So do I. <laughs> but, <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> but he also had a violent temper, which of course got worse with alcohol. I know that Short, feeling too. <laughs> shortly I later, never killed nobody. Short, shortly later, he began stealing. He he even walked right into a neighbor's house and stole a freshly baked apple pie that he had smelled from the outside. Oh, okay. And while while he was in there, he stole a pistol that he had found in the, the house. Now the pistol comes up later. Um, shortly later, or later, 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 later. Okay. Well, not much later. I mean, well, yeah. Well, short, well, shortly yeah. later. Shortly, shortly later. later. Is it going to be in this episode or the next one? This one. So shortly later. Okay. Shortly later. <laughs> um, he was arrested, and the police decided to make an example out of him, and they did. 
Carl was sent to the Minnesota State Reform School. For white boys? <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I had to do it. I was, I, <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I know you were. That's why I paused. <laughs> um, but this was a air quote Christian facility, and it was more for like white boys? a. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, was, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> it was. It was more like the Spanish Inquisition. Okay. And he didn't expect. So for white boys. <laughs> he he didn't expect what was coming. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> they preached uh, strict discipline and purity and then enforced it with flagellation, among other neat and fun things. <laughs> other neat and fun things. Carl was 11 years old at the time. And he quickly learned that he hadn't been through shit at this point. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I guess so. The warden made all the boys call him Father. <laughs> now, Father instantly began, and I'm just going to call him Father because, but. Hey, that's what he wanted to be I'm, called, so why not? Yeah, so Father. I'm going to make fun of Father for the fucked up shit that he did. <sighs> father. Father. Oh. Uh, so father instantly began grilling Carl about his homosexual tendencies. <laughs> Carl was showing a, any? <laughs> Carl, Carl was 11. He didn't have any tendencies at that point. <laughs> but father uh, didn't, didn't believe him. And, and soon, and Carl soon learned the hard way. What was all that was about? Um, after his, you know, but this is, this is all day one. This is all day one. Yeah. Um, Carl was stripped Whoa. naked from the waist down and father very in close, very closely examined Carl's genitals and his asshole for signs of sinning. Okay. Father then began explaining what a homosexual predator would do like a boy, it would do to a boy like him. And I'm sure father was hard as a rock during this. <laughs> you think? <sighs> so. Anyway, let's, let's not go there. Father then demonstrated some of the things. Of course he did. I guess we're going there anyway. <laughs> you, you know, so, so, so Carl, so, you, so Carl would know the warning signs, you know? Oh, of course. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's, why. That, that's why. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he just has Carl's best interest at heart. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Jeez. So, but yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, Carl was shocked and scared, but like I said, this is only day one and it was going to get much worse from that point on. Carl initially didn't have much of an issue with the other boys in the school and he had a reputation of being a badass. So the other boys left him alone. And Carl didn't want to be friends with anybody either. Um, but the next morning, two guards came and got him out of his bunk to, quote, educate him on ways that he could improve himself. Okay. I mean, <sighs> That's not good. What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, I'm about to tell you. All right. Well, get to it then. They brought him to a warehouse on the property that would shape Carl into the movie monster that he became, and this place was called the painting room. Why was it called that? Take a guess. Um, I mean, I can think. I mean, because they beat the shit out of him, it was painted with blood. You're close. All right. Well, okay, it's close. Think, think of it. Think of two different colors. Two different colors. Not red. Blue and pink. Not pink. Not pink. Oops. Brown. Black. Black. Black, black and blue. Okay. Black and oh, blue. Oh, black and blue. Okay. <laughs> Still, you're you're on the right track. I I was getting there. So so Carl thought that he was going to an art class of some sort, and so he was like, "Yay!" or "Yay!" or "No, hold on, yay. he's still young at this point." Yay, painting! Yay. I even got the little you know voice 
crack in there from <laughs> yep. you know pre pre pubescent. <laughs> but um he was you know he he was in a, a he he was going to a, some sort of a painting class, but not and not the kind that he was expecting. <laughs> it was called the painting room because the kids that went there they came out black and blue. Yes. Okay. It makes sense now. Yeah, it was, it was an, it, 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 it it was, it was, (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but we've been, we've been doing this for like a year and a half, man. And it it still cracks me up when you trip on words like that. (laughs) And we leave them in because it cracks everybody up. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I do. I, yeah, we do now. I used to try to edit. I used to try to edit his words together to make the word that he meant to say, and that was just too much. Well, and plus the ums went away early on. I was like um 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 every other yeah, word. The ums were terrible. Wait right on. So we've we've matured past the infants with attitudes that we used to be. Right now we're toddlers with attitudes. Yes, we're toddlers with attitudes. Right. So. Uh, but it was an initiation of sorts for every new kid to shock them out of their bad behavior. And it was a, a place that they'd see again for anything the school deemed inappropriate, which was pretty much anything literally, but they did. And whenever a kid went to the painting room, father was there waiting for them. Oh, of course he was. <laughs> Carl was stripped down and we strapped to a, a wooden bench and then a towel soaked in salt water was put on his back. Okay. And then, and then a vicious beating with a thick leather belt by father began. The, the belt had around a hundred holes poked into it and each time the belt hit the skin, the skin was sucked into the holes and, and then ripped, ripped back out. And when it, when it was ripped off of him, it would blister. And then the blisters would then be ripped open when it was hit again. Yeah, you know, with the belt. And then the salt water would rush into the now open wound. Yeah. Well, I figured that's where the salt water towel was going, but damn. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's, that's... Dude, you weren't, you weren't kid when you said Spanish Inquisition. Holy shit. <laughs> no, I wasn't. But it's important to go through all of this because it, it gives you, it gives you an understanding of, of just what made this guy into what he became. Yeah. And fuck. And it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Yeah. I mean, the, the shit that that's just like, you know, it's just like I'd give him a hug but he would break my neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably would. So, um Father was getting pure en- enjoyment off of Carl's screams, and once once Carl realized that Father and the guards were enjoying his torment, he shut up. He was oh. silent. He he let them finish, and he didn't make a sound. And they they amped up their beating too. Like, damn it, scream, scream, you little piggy, or whatever, you know. <laughs> and but but no, Carl was just sitting there. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure he was like I'm sure tears were coming out of his face or whatever, but he was not making a sound. Freedom. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and while the um, you know, while while the beating the, yeah, the beatings were meant to drive the evil away from these kids, it had the opposite effect on Carl. You know, it, it hardened him. Apparently. <laughs> I mean, dude, yeah. if he was that young and figured out it, that what was going on like that, like they were getting off on him, crying out yeah. and stop doing it. Like I told you, he's borderline genius level. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for for a kid to figure that out like that, mm-hmm. yeah, you're impressive. in trouble. You're in trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, nobody, I mean, no, nobody was. Um, oh damn. I meant, to, I meant to say something here. It, it's like they were trying to tend, tenderize him, but it hardened him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. Yep. At this point, Carl, we're on your side. At right now point. we are. Yep. Right, right now, now we we're are. on your side, Carl. Right now we're rooting for you, boy. Mm-hmm. But but even when we get into his killings and stuff like that, you're this all the shit that happens in this first episode is going to be in the back of your mind, and it's just like, 
God damn, what would have happened? What what would he have become if he had had a normal childhood? You know? Yeah. This is total nurture. This is there's no nature about this whatsoever. You know, this he is purely the product of a of a torturous and horrific upbringing. Yep. So, but uh, nobody was ever going to take pleasure at Carl's expense again. But that didn't mean that they weren't going to try. Of course not. Um, right after his appointment in the painting room, he was required to go to, to class. And ironically, most of the lessons that were taught there were they're centered around Bible study, morality, and decency. <laughs> hypocrite's gonna hypocrite. Yep, hypocrite's gonna hypocrite. That's for sure. <laughs> Holy shit! So Carl was put to work in the kitchen. He had a hand in cooking meals for father and the other school staff. So let's just say that all of their meals and drinks had special ingredients added to them. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. So Carl didn't do very well in classes, which resulted in frequent trips to the painting room. And he was there so much that the wounds never healed. But Carl wasn't going to break. And the guards took that as a challenge. And um, and the beatings got so frequent and intense that when they did end, it ended because the, it, because they were exhausted. Carl never broke. So he wore them out just by going, you know, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you know? Wow. Total fucking badass. Hell yeah. Oh, and this is something right out of fucking Acme. Looney Tunes. <laughs> Looney Tunes. As a result, and this is all because of Carl. This isn't because of anybody else. This is because of Carl. They, um, father had a hand crank whipping machine made. Okay. <laughs> Basically leather straps, um, on a wheel that the boys would be placed under and they would, cr- they would hand crank it and everything. And it would just go, whap, 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 whap. but, um, what the fuck? <laughs> but Carl actually preferred that because it didn't deal the force nearly as fiercely as the strength of a sadistic grown man. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I'm I, so that, that kind of backfired on him, but all right. Yeah, that's like right out of the fucking Acme School of Technology, you know? Yeah, that sounds like something Wile E. Coyote would do. <laughs> Holy yeah. crap. But still, he had... um you know, Carl had basically had enough, you know, um, you know, it's just like he, he was regularly adding secret ingredients to father's food. But one time Carl added rat poison to the food and he was caught. Oh, not, you know, it, it wasn't his bodily secretions that got him caught, the, but he, for, he left the box of rat poison. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he left the he he left the um he left the box of rat poison open like in the kitchen. So the so one of the guards like uh, just basically deduced what had happened and he stopped the food from going out. Okay. But you can't punish him for this. I mean, because nothing worked. You know, it's just like you could literally hit this guy over the head with a baseball bat. He'd be like, "Please, sir, I'd like some more." <laughs> Can I have some of that methanol in my sardines? <laughs> you got any more of that methanol back there? <laughs> How about some broken glass? I like broken some glass. Some broken yeah. glass, please. Carpet tax, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, Keep going, I'll be right back. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think that um, Carl would have gotten along with Michael Malloy. I mean, Carl really didn't get along with anybody. Although... If there was anybody that, you know, Michael Malloy loved to drink, so maybe Carl would have gotten along with him. Who knows? You know, Michael Malloy wasn't going to try to hurt him or anything. Right. So Carl was literally learning how to become a monster. And the, the guards were pummeling him every chance that they got. Um, and, but, so when punishing him would, wouldn't work, they made him clean everything. Everything. Like, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, he, he had to clean everything. And I'm sure he cleaned bathroom floors with a toothbrush, you know. But, um, yeah, they the guards were pummeling every chance they got, and they were raping him as well. But, you know, he was unable to take the guards, so he winds up taking it out on, on the smaller boys at the school. None of the boys messed with him. But no matter what the guards did to him, he wouldn't even flinch. They even tried sleep deprivation on him. But Carl, as you remember, was ar- was already used to getting two hours of sleep. Yeah, right. He's just like, okay, what else you got, bitch? <laughs> you that, that totally backfired. Yeah. So, like, I, like I said, it's just like we're 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 rooting we're rooting for him at this point. We want to see him, like, you know, go on like a horror movie revenge. <laughs> thing on the people that are actually doing fucking doing him wrong we want to see this you know Mm -hmm. if quentin tarantino made a story of his upbringing the ending of the story would be a lot different than what happened because he would he'd basically just you know at like 16 years old just go back and kill father and all that stuff you know kind of like what he did with inglorious bastards you know yeah like great movie but a lot different than how it actually happened. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Come so, on, Quentin, make, make this movie <laughs> <laughs> and get fucking Kane to play Carl. Right. The and while you're at it, make a Michael Malloy movie. We need that too. I need that yeah, we, in my life. I do too. <laughs> I, I think everybody needs that. No, don't make a movie, make a mini series, like a six episode mini series. Eh, not, well, don't, never mind. I'm, a, I'm talking to you, Netflix. I'm talking to you, Netflix. Yeah. I'm not talking to you, Disney Plus. No. Netflix. Netflix or Amazon? Yeah. Because of... <laughs> never mind. Not going to say it. I don't, want <laughs> the, night... I don't want the mouse mad at me. <laughs> what, one night, Carl... <laughs> <laughs> One night, Carl burnt down the painting room. Okay. He just burnt it down, and uh, he snuck out out of out of bed and everything, and went. He like literally burnt the fucking painting room to the ground. Good for him. Yep. And th- this gained respect from him from all the uh, um, other boys in the school, like all of them. And the older boys taught taught him. Like after that, they're like, okay, well, cause they were, they were going to the painting room too. Everybody was going to the painting room. You get the painting room. You get the painting room. Everybody gets <laughs> the, get painting the painting room. room. Whether you're <laughs> bad or not. Right. You're just going. He doesn't care if you've been bad or good. He's going to whoop your ass for goodness sake. <laughs> 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 that just oh, popped shit. into my head. That yep. was right off. That was not, that was not in the, in the, in the notes. <laughs> but, but that, yeah, but so they, they're, they're like, look, Carl, if you want to get out of here, this is what you got to do. You have to tell the brass how, you know, whatever they want to hear. You just that, you know, suck it up, lie to them. You know, you're lying. We know you're lying and we don't care because we're doing the same fucking thing. <laughs> right. You know, but it worked. Carl actually did it. He actually took their advice and it worked. He began doing well on his schoolwork. And yeah, but at this time, Carl there was like public enemy number one in, in that school. He was, he was the, the baddest apple there. So, um, but the guards were all, you know, father and the guards, they're all patting themselves on the back about how they had cured him. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, he's just sitting here. I got you. Like, yeah, I got. I got you where I want you, bitches. <laughs> right? But within a month, he was released. A changed man. Is, and, they, and they're like, they're probably like in their brochures or whatever. I mean, this, I, I kind of take, I kind of take this school as kind of like similar to what, um, Nora was talking about. This is basically the precursor to the troubled teen industry bullshit. Yeah, you know, I was thinking the very same thing. Yeah, so so basically, they're if they're sending out literature to these people, oh, like if you got a troubled kid or whatever, look at what we did for this for this guy Carl. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at look. it now before it changes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it ain't gonna last. No, it's not. 
<laughs> that boy but, Carl was too smart. He saw right through our little ruse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he had been there for two years and doing torture daily. And, um, and Carl grew up, settled down, got a job, married a woman. They had three kids. They had a house with a white picket fence and a Labrador retriever named Sparky. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> oh, that was good, though. But no, they didn't. I'm, I can guarantee you, know, you that they didn't. <laughs> you know what? You know what would have been better? If he had actually gone to the electric chair, that would have made that even funnier. But he didn't go see old Sparky. <laughs> he didn't ride the lightning? All right. No. Oh, fumble. <laughs> oh, fumble. Who got it? I don't know yet. It's a pile. <laughs> Looks like the Dolphins got it. Looks like the Dolphins got it. Yeah, I'm watching the Dolphins and the Patriots game right now. It would have been done. We, we, we would have been done recording the episode by the time the game started but if it wasn't for all these damn technical difficulties. Yeah. This, <laughs> so, this, this one's worse than the Glory episode. Yeah. But we're we're making it through this one in first, you know, first try, slowly but surely. I mean, this is actually part three of part one of a three-part <laughs> series. <laughs> we were going to have to piece them together. That's yeah. why if you notice, if you're, if you're watching the video you see, it's like I'm all washed out right now. It's because I've, got, it's just because things are different because I've, I've, I gotta, I gotta wash my fence. I'm representing, see, I got the Dolphins t-shirt on. Yeah. So anyway, so I, that's like, you might hear me go bubble or touchdown or whatever, <laughs> or you might even hear me go fuck, but right now fumble and the <sighs> Dolphins recovered. So yay, go fins, fins up. Anyway, hashtag, but I digress. <laughs> How did we get through last football season without doing this? Shit? <laughs> we didn't record on Sundays. <laughs> so what? But what came out of that school was a monster who lived his life by praying on the week to get what he wanted and hating humanity as a whole. But put a knife in that because we're not there yet. So um, Carl went back home, but the the farm was a wreck, and one of his brothers had actually drowned. Oh damn it! And his mother was bedridden, and Carl, but Carl was happy because he wouldn't have to work the farm. <laughs> well, I guess so, you gotta look for the silver lining. Yeah. He went back to the drinking and stealing, and now he was mugging people. <laughs> he, mugging he would, people. he would, he would actually, pref- he actually preferred to groan, uh, to, to groan. To <laughs> He would actually, he actually preferred to mug grown men successfully. That, that, those were his favorite target. You know why? Because the preacher beat him up and, or, or I'm sorry, father beat him up and he, uh, had a. No. Oh. No? Had nothing to do with that. It's because a grown man is not going to admit that he got mugged by a, by a, you know, like a, a, a 12 year old kid. <laughs> and Carl okay. figured that out. Like I said, guy's borderline genius. Yeah, I mean, dude, if I got mugged, I don't care how how old the person is. I'm snitching. <laughs> yeah, but then I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I know. Different times and all. Yeah. So, um, Carl also became acquainted with a Native American boy who would become his criminal sidekick. That's okay. racist. <laughs> no, but it, no, it's just he was a Native American boy, and he became the guy's sidekick. And yeah, you know, they they would rob them. Na- they would rob men, strip them naked, and then make them run off in the buff. Okay. <laughs> he got off on that, and he hadn't raped anybody, oh, no. but put a knife in that. Hold on, my knife. I can't find my knife. I found it. He was also bringing in considerable amounts of money from these people that that he ganked, you know, robbed. Oh well, yeah. But in an actual, you know, in a what the, in a, <laughs> God. Oh shit. In a what the actual fuck moment, Carl told his mother that he wanted to become a priest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the um, fuck? 
So she she sent a letter to a seminary school, and he was admitted, and everybody liked him there except for one person. There was one teacher there who was also a priest, and he was a German, and he didn't believe that Carl was genuine and that he lacked faith. But somehow, and Carl, Carl must have been paying attention when he was at the, the previous school because they, you know, they beat the Bible. You know, they literally beat them, literally beat him with the Bible, mm-hmm. among other things. Carl was somehow able to throw scripture right back at this guy. Ooh. And, um, you know, and they would get into screaming matches and everything. And, and, Finally, it got to the point to where the leaders of the seminary got involved, and Carl was punished severely. And the the and the priest who had the who had the beef with Carl, he was allowed to administer the beatings. That doesn't seem fair. No. All right. What the? How, how? I mean, you would. You would think that you would want somebody to, you know, like a, a student in one of those schools to be able to rattle off scripture, scripture the way that Carl did. Mm-hmm. But, um, but no, it's insubordination at that point. Yeah. Because you're, because you're making the, you're making the people, you're, you're making the, 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 the priests look bad, you know, so you can't, yeah. you can't have that. Can't have somebody knowing more than, more than right. th- that. So anyway. Um, but of course his beatings had the same effect that the ones from the reform school, the reform school did. And, you know, it pissed them off. Yeah. You know, although this, this preacher who was beating him now, he was an amateur compared to the sadist at the reform (laughs) school. (laughs) Yeah. I just, never mind. I don't, I don't even want to get started on that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Because if we get started on that, this is an entirely different episode. Um, so to cope, Carl would do minor robberies for liquor, you know, for liquor money. But that escalated when he realized that people in war in Minnesota left the doors unlocked when they weren't home. Oh boy. Carl still had the the pistol that he had stolen a few years prior and he carried it with him wherever he went. And on Carl's last day of the seminary school, the priest confronted him, demanding more proof that he understood the teachings. And Carl had done this countless times before. It was possible that the priest was intimidated by Carl because of how much he actually knew. But it's but it's also possible that the priest was a good judge of character and saw the monster that Carl was. Yeah, I can see that. So... You know, so I was just like, yeah, it, it, it's it, it either either way. But whatever the case, the priest began beating Carl, and the pistol fell out of Carl's clothes. Row, row, right and here. the priest froze, and Carl picked it up and he cocked it, and he pointed it at the priest. He walked up close to um to the priest, and he po- pointed it right between the, the priest's eyes, and he pulled the trigger. Oh. Click. Don't tell me he was out of bullets. No, the gun was loaded, but um, but Carl hadn't taken care of the gun over the years. It had gotten like all bogged down because he had been like hiding it and everything, and like under beds and stuff like that. And it wasn't like wrapped in anything or put in a box, so it just like got bogged down with dust. Oh, let that be a lesson yeah. to you, boys and girls. Always maintain your firearms. Right. It, you know, Carl hadn't taken care of it and it simply wouldn't fire. He pulled the trigger several more times and nothing. Wow. Yeah, you, you, you have to keep guns clean <coughs> and Carl hadn't. You know, so Carl was restrained by a couple teachers who had come in to investigate what the commotion was. But the, but the seminary didn't want to get the police involved because an investigation might uncover other things. Other things. Oh. So they um, agreed that Carl just just go, yeah. You know, no re- no recourse for <laughs> yeah, no recourse for the attempted murder. No shit, he pulled the trigger <laughs> like three or four times. <laughs> he was yeah, trying to is, kill that dude. He was trying to kill that dude. <laughs> I mean, like once. Okay, that was an accident. I didn't mean to pull the trigger, but like three or four times, you tried to empty that damn gun into that. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you wanted that person dead. Yeah. They're not getting out of that one. Nope. But but he got away with it. They kept the gun. But the gun was useless anyway. So <laughs> I mean, just needs cleaning. Well, It'll be fine. Yeah, Let's clean yeah, it. Yeah, just clean it. And I, I'm sure that they, that whoever did it, they 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 cleaned it and they had themselves a pretty nice pistol. <laughs> right. But Carl then went home, packed a bag, and then took off. The monster was loose. Release the kraken. <laughs> the kraken was released. So Carl wanted to go far away, and horses were still being used for transportation, and while cars did exist, hitch- hitchhiking hadn't become a thing yet. So that left one option. Take a guess. Did he get on a train? He did. Yeah, yeah I got it right. First try. <laughs> um, does it happen often? <laughs> but trains had risk. You know, trains, train tickets were expensive and security made it impossible to jump onto a passenger fra- train for free. So that left freight trains. Yep. Freight trains were a popular way for transient, homeless, mentally ill, and criminals to get around. You know, just, just hop on an empty box car and enjoy the ride. Yeah. You know, Carl, while being numb to abuse, he had no ability to, to read people and that would become a problem for him. Okay. His initial encounters with trained folk were positive. But Carl kept to himself unless a group of hobos were passing a, a bottle of whiskey around. But that kind of lowered his guard because, you know, he thought that everybody was cool like this. <laughs> oh. But he <laughs> would soon learn the harsh reality of hobo train life. <laughs> okay. Uh. He jumped on a train headed to Nebraska, and there were four older men already on board the car that he had hopped onto. And these four men had been traveling together for years, and they shared everything equally. That was their routine. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, um, but, but they had whiskey, and they were more than happy to share it, share it with a 14-year-old boy. Yeah. <laughs> After Look Carl had... them jeans. You're, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, and after Carl had loosened up a bit, one of them said, listen, kid, there's a thing we all like to do together that feels real good, and we think you'll enjoy it as much as we do. <laughs> oh, my God. Carl wasn't phased when they started undressing. I mean, he had already seen more dicks than a freaking porn actress today sees in a day. <laughs> okay. He knew what they had in mind. And he's just like, nah, you know what? I'm good. I've had enough fun for one night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. He said, nah, I'm good. I've had enough fun for one night. <laughs> night. <laughs> and I'm sure they were like, oh, no, you haven't, kid. Damn it. Right. Like you fucking sliding out of this freaking chair, dude. He's killing me. The men ignored him. It was four on one. But Carl fought hard, but they still over- overpowered him. All four of them raped him repeatedly that night. And when they were done, they literally tossed Carl out of the boxcar while the train was moving. Oh. Carl survived. Well, of course he did, or we wouldn't be telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, actually, no, he, you know, he didn't survive and. Thanks for listening. <laughs> no. But April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> he woke up the next morning and touchdown fins. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think that's what he said. Well, he would have if he was watching the game that I'm watching. Of course, he's a Vikings fan. But the, did the Vikings even? The Vikings didn't even. I don't even think football ex- existed back then. I don't no, know, dude. I mean, dude, you said he was 14 when this happened. Yeah, yeah. That was what he was born in 91. So, dude, we're talking like the very early 1900s. Yeah, I think college football existed in its infancy back, you know, at that time. But pro football was still probably at least 20, 30 years away. The pro football, like the first Super Bowl, was in the 60s. Yeah, but there was championships long before that. 
No, I know. I mean, dude, I know football has been around what, longer than that. Why I, do you I, think I Green that. Bay is called Title Town? Because they've got like 20 titles, but only two Super Bowl rings. Well, three. Three. See, I didn't even know that because I don't really care about football. I know. I just, <laughs> I know. I know. Here's my man card. Take it. No, it doesn't matter if you're not into football. I just happen to be into football. So. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Nope. No, I'm not going to punch your man card for you not liking football. A lot of people don't like football. A lot of people do. So I mean, if I'm sitting at a bar, football's on, I'll watch it. But I don't get crazy right. over shit like that. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> no hashtag on that one. We just do it. <laughs> no, we just do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so the... Carl woke up the next morning and he slowly crept to the next town. Lesson learned. It was every man for himself. And he deduced that sodomy must be a normal thing in life um, for the strong to take from the weak. So he's just like, okay, I'm all in. And although nobody, no, you know, nobody was going to take him again. He was humiliated by those hobos, made to feel weak. Never again. Carl would turn on humanity before humanity turned on him. Keep in mind, he was a 14-year-old with that mindset. Yeah. God damn, I just, you know. Sorry, I'm moving my mic again. I'm trying to, get, trying to get comfortable here. Just you, How can you not feel bad for him at this point? I know, dude. The poor, I mean. Dude <sighs> never stood a chance. He never stood a no, chance. No, he didn't. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Part two and part, uh, it's like we're getting rid of all the nasty stuff that was done to him in this one. Yeah. But in the next two, we're going to be talking about the nasty stuff that he does to other people. Yeah, I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, because I, I, like you said earlier, dude, I'm rooting for this kid right now. And, but yeah, I know, I I know. know better. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, but still it, it's natural for this. It's natural yeah. for the story. And even when you're talking, even when we get into the gruesome stuff that he does, you're still just like, God, look at how he was brought up though. I mean, you know, yeah. and it's like, I didn't even feel the, like Danny Rowling when we covered him. I didn't feel bad. For, I mean, I felt bad for him because, you know, his dad was a piece of shit, but his dad was nowhere near the piece of, sh you know, like the piece of shit that this dude endured from everybody, everybody. he came into contact with. Yeah, Pretty much every grown up in his life was a piece of shit. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, I, I really, I, I, it's like even going forward, it's just like, yeah, was he a piece of shit? Did he deserve what he got for what he did. Yeah. He's one of the most notorious serial killers that the United States has ever had. But, um, and definitely the scariest, but, yeah. um, but so, yeah, absolutely. He deserves the punishment that he got, but still in the back of your mind, you're thinking, what the fuck? What you the know, fuck? Just, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, this wouldn't have happened if he had just been raised right. You know? Yeah. Or maybe it still would have, who knows? Honestly, I'm betting on it wouldn't have. Probably, yeah. Honestly. I mean, yeah, me too. It, it it wouldn't have, but you never know. So, um, some, some 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 kids just have a head of bad head full of bad wiring, you know. Yeah, but that's nature. This is not nature. This is nurture. I know, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It all started when his dad tried to be a surgeon, and <laughs> yeah, don't pretend to be doctors. Right. That'll come up in the Ant Hill Kids episode on a much larger scale. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm, I'm just trying to prepare you for that one. I, I, I'm still trying to decide if I'm just going to sit here and like Produce. be producer <laughs> <laughs> or or if I'm actually going to take part in it. I don't know. I, I, I'll i do it. I have to. I know. It is, it is what it is. I don't. I don't know because there's the, the only book on that is called Savage Messiah and it's out of print and it, and the book was an, initially written in French and it's just like the only books that you can find are like a hundred bucks a piece. I'm not paying a hundred dollars for a book to do a podcast episode on. So Ant Hill kids, <laughs> unless I can find, unless I can piece it together with like a bunch of articles, I want to tell the whole story because that's mm -hmm. what we do here. We tell the whole, we tell everything. We're not like a 30 minute episode where, just, where they're just reading the Wikipedia page and, you know, and, like, we oh, do yeah, use wiki though, so it's all right. 
we use wiki for certain things. Yes. Certain things like backstory. Wiki's good for that. <laughs> but everything Indeed. that happened after the backstory, not so much. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, th- then you're just getting the, just, just stripped down version of it and everything. You're not getting all the details, but, but still anyway, hashtag, but I digress. But like I said, he, he was 14 years old at that point. And shortly later, he was sexually assaulted again. Again. I thought he said he wasn't going to let that happen to him anymore. Now, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> he had been um, avoiding the, you know, the transients and everything, but he was broke and he was thirsty. Dude, dude needed a drink. <laughs> so he found a group of people and he joined in with them. You know, he got buzzed but not drunk, and he struck up a conversation with an older man who was. Genu- air quote, genuinely interested in everything that Carl had to say. <laughs> they were sharing a bottle, and the more comfortable Carl got, the more he drank. And, you know, the, the man was clearly seducing Carl. And, um, you know, and he starts talking about sodomy, how great it is, and all that stuff, and everything. And Carl was actually into having a consensual encounter with this man. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, he was he was he was seduced. <laughs> but, um, nothing wrong with that. Well what hap- there's something wrong with what happens next. The the man kept the liquor flowing and he led Carl well also this is a grown man, Carl's fourteen, so there's a lot wrong with that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you kind of forget about that because you, 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 it's like everything that this guy's going through and everything, you expect it to be a grown man, but it's not. But he's not, yeah. Damn it. All right. Yeah. There's, okay. You're right. There's a lot wrong with that. Never mind. So, I mean, yeah. um, so the, you know, it, it, he led Carl to a barn and they were discussing taking turns so that they could both enjoy it. Carl said that he wanted to go first because he had never given it before. Oh, okay. But then the man just basically, you know, keep in mind they're in a barn. Then the man just basically said, hey, come on. Uh-oh. Come on, boys. Oh, called no. out to his friends who were hiding in the barn. Why is it always a barn? And they all took turns raping him. You know, lucky for Carl, he passed out because he was schnockered. But um, but when he woke up the next morning alone in the barn, his head his head actually hurt more than his ass did. <laughs> From the hangover, or because they beat the him? hangover, okay. the hangover. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible! Holy shit! Yeah. But if there was any doubt in his mind before. The second lesson cemented it in his head. You know, sodomy with boys must be an incredible thing because so many men wanted it. The world was his oyster. Wow. And once again, 14-year-old with that mindset. Oh, that's terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to say this poor kid, but, you know, at this time, yes, this poor kid, but, you know. At this time, yeah. Oh, but, okay. So Carl began um, heading back east and everything. He was being careful of hobos. The only time he would approach one was if it was if if the hobo was alone and if he wanted something, whiskey or food. But he had also began raping people. I was just going to say whiskey, food, or sex. <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, just like it's on. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the man for once. Yeah. You know, and that's, and it's just, but he had stolen a gun, which gave him a sense of security. And he also had a desire for revenge on all hobos. <laughs> on all of them. Not just if the ones that got him. Every fucking one of them. them. <laughs> if he came across a group of them, he would force them to have sex at gunpoint. Like oh. with each other. With each other. And, okay. And and with him. Oh. He would make them rape each other and then he would like then he would take it. 
One time a railroad employee caught him, you know, caught him in a, in a box car where he was raping a man. Um, Carl grabbed the, the railroad worker and forced a hobo to rape the employee. <laughs> Jesus. And then, and then he raped both of them. Wow. <laughs> like, you want to, you, you want to laugh, but you can't, you know? <laughs> it's like, I, I know. <laughs> I'm not rooting for him anymore. No, I'm not either. Fuck this guy. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, jeez. What the fuck? All right. Well. Back in Minnesota, Carl was arrested for robbery. And because he was under 18, he was sent to the Red Wing Training School. For white boys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I said I wasn't going to do it again, but I couldn't help it. No, it's worth doing it every time something like that comes up. Because yeah, you know, it's just what 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 happened to the Pee Wee Gaskins episode that was on the fucking Wikipedia page. I mean, it it might still be, I don't know, <laughs> but um, I think I think at the time I think I I think I posted a screenshot of it just to prove it. I think I did, but <laughs> yeah, because we we didn't that one didn't go away that entire episode. <laughs> kind of like this one. <laughs> kind of like everyone. Yeah, any, anytime you mention some kind of reform school or everything, yeah, it's always for white boys. For white boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Changing a battery in my vape. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. This place was a cakewalk for Carl, and they they had him doing farm work, which Carl knew how to do. He didn't get tired out from the from the work, which other kids did. You know, over there, right? And the punishments were very mild compared to what he was used to. <laughs> so Carl began raping boys during the night, threatening them if they said anything, and all of the boys were afraid of him except a fifteen year old boy named Jimmy. 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 Yeah, you know, J- Jimmy wasn't a big guy. <laughs> but um but while all the other kids avoided Carl, Jimmy started just just talking to him. Just like, "Hey man, what's up?" You know, so they became friends or as close to what Carl could ever have as a friend. Right. Um Carl and Jimmy began coming up with an escape plan and you know, like I said before, Carl was extremely intelligent, although there wasn't really anything intelligent about this escape plan. They just walked off the property in the middle of the night and vanished <laughs> into the woods. <laughs> you know, this wasn't so one of those. So there was no rock hammer and a poster Rita Hayworth or anything like that. No, there, and there was none of the crazy elaborate shit that, um, that, you know, like Pee Wee Gaskins did and everything, but that's coming in part two. I was going to say, it's probably going to happen later. <laughs> yeah. It has to because, yeah. Anyway. So, um, but Carl had revenge in mind. <laughs> of course yeah, he since, did. Since the abuse that took his childhood happened in religious organizations, he targeted churches. Yeah, he and Jimmy would break into churches and steal whatever they could. Then they would light the churches on fire. Um, they did burned they, a did lot. Did they go to Norway? I'm getting there. No, they didn't go to Norway, but they they burned light lots of chor- torches. Torches. torches? They, they they learned they. But, uh, uh, well, you know, they, you use a torch to burn down a church, therefore it's a church. <laughs> the torch. <laughs> oh, the torch. The torch. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna write a book with all these words you make up. When you get tongue tied, it's gonna be great. It'll be like Sniglets from not necessarily the news back in the eighties. But that would mean you'd have to go back and listen to every single episode we've done because I I'm do gonna it have to do episode. that anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, every episode's about to get at least one more listen. <laughs> but they they had likely burned even more more churches than the Norwegian black metal 
band members would burn. Episode 14, by Episode the way. Episode 14, by the way. <laughs> they had um, lots of money from all the things that they had stolen, and, but they and they moved around so much that they were impossible for the police to attract. They were two peas in a pod. They but, go together like peas and carrots. They go together like peas and carrots, but but nothing lasts forever. Very true. Jimmy got busted for trying to sell some stolen candlesticks, and he was sent to a real prison, both for the stolen goods and for escaping from the previous Senate. <laughs> Dude, how, how can you give the how can you give Jimmy more time, dude? They just walked off. You dumbasses, let them go. Right. I mean, yeah, I get it. They escaped, but I mean, seriously, when nobody was paying attention, if you right. just walk off the. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, Jimmy wa- Jimmy wound up being in prison for the rest of his life, and he died in of old age in prison. Okay. But he never gave Carl up. Well, good for him. So, you know, he had a friend. You know, Carl did have a friend. He may not have considered Jimmy a friend, but Jimmy considered Carl a friend. Right. Carl I had a friend in Jimmy. Say that again. I said Carl had a friend in Jimmy. <laughs> Carl was shook up about what happened to Jimmy, so he took to the rails again, and he kept to himself, just his own thing, robbing, raping, drinking, et cetera. Um, what are your traditionals? What tradition? <laughs> traditionals going in the book. <laughs> what are your credentials? Theft, rape, robbery, and rape. You said rape twice. I like rape. <laughs> you said rape twice. I like rape. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> He rode a blazing saddle. <laughs> so, um, are we awake? Well, that depends. <laughs> are we black? We are. Well, then we're awake, but we're very we're, puzzled. Where's all the white women at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that that's a, oh Jesus! I swear, I want to go. I want to go to like a university. And like rent out one of the auditoriums there and do a screening for the college kids of Blazing Saddles. <laughs> oh my God, dude, they would lose their friggin' minds. <sighs> like what? <laughs> oh no, dude, they would because. Oh, I know. I, mean, that I know movie, they would. I mean, that movie was done. I mean, yeah, okay, it comes off but racist, if you, but it was done. If you, in no, it, I mean, the black people that were in that movie were in on it. They got it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's not like it was, it was, like it was, it was racist, racist. It was illustrating absurdity by being absurd is what yes, it was. Yes, exactly. Like it's showing how stupid racism is. Yes. That's what that movie was about. And, and I'm, you know, and that's why it attempts to, cancel that movie have been un- unsuccessful because you know people who know know the fucking truth yeah. about wh- what what a great fucking piece of work that movie is but there's too many you people know? our age that love that movie and get it and get it yeah but I, I i would love to do that just host a um a screening at a at a university <laughs> with peace <laughs> you that know, would be you the know. end of you <laughs> <laughs> i'll be far far away from that <laughs> oh bullshit you'd be right there with me but I'd be <laughs> armed <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway dude this hour this episode's only gonna be an hour long with all the damn digressions <laughs> nah, nah. I know cause you gotta leave some in cause some of it's funny yeah but um He had a good amount of money, you know, from what he and Jimmy, and of course he took Jimmy's take as well. But, um, but when, when that dry, when that dried up, he found himself in Plano, Kansas. <laughs> not our Kansas. Uh, not our Plano, Kansas, Kansas. Plano, Kansas. He was 15 at this point and he wanted to be a cowboy <laughs> when he was growing up. Gonna take, never mind. <laughs> it was a childhood dream of his, but since he couldn't do that, he joined the army. 
the Indian Wars were still going on out west, so he figured he'd kill Indians that way. Okay. He lied about his age to get in, which wasn't hard because he looked considerably older than he actually was. Um, he showed up at the recruiter's office drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? And they they were still interested in him because of his size and mass, and they told him to come back when he was sober. So he did, and he he was in. Times were different um, back then. Yeah, indeed. Um, he was great with weapons, and he had a super endurance to physical training and everything. And obviously, yeah. <clears throat> but he but he still had a rebellious streak. And the officers were divided on him. Some thought that he was just a punk kid who wanted to beat everybody up, while others thought that he could be molded into a great leader, especially in battles. All right. <clears throat> um, but Carl didn't like being sober. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> Still, most of the men that um, that he was in with were older and stronger than him, so he wasn't really able to beat up on people, and he certainly wasn't going to be able to rape. He got his first paycheck, and it was gone the same day that he got it, and he snuck off base to drink, and the next day he was hung over and broke. But they didn't have a bar on base, dude? That's the cheapest place to drink. No, uh, <laughs> different times. Yeah. But, so, so then, anyway. you know, our, army posts weren't um, back then the way that they are now, where they're like miniature cities, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or in some cases, big cities like Fort Bragg and Fort Campbell, they're bigger than some small, you know, small, smaller cities in, in the in the country. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like that back then. Back then, it was just like probably like two or three acres surrounded by freaking, you know, like. <laughs> Trees lined and razor up. Razor wire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, I'm going to hell. No, Go they had hell. bricks. They had bricks. They had bricks. They had bricks. So. All right. But still, it was one area, not like an entire city like an, a military post is now. Yeah. But, um, you know, so, so the next day, you know, so he began stealing uniforms and sneaking off base to sell them. And he got caught. And stealing army army property was a big no no, and the the officers didn't know how to punish him. Once again, they were divided. Some wanted to charge him with fucking treason for stealing military property. Yeah. While others were saying he was just a young, you know, he was young and just made a mistake. Yeah, you know, some people were just like like really like sold on. It's like, okay, look at this guy. Look at him. We need guy, him. You, you could shoot. You could shoot him in the chest five times, and he would not. He, he would still, still keep go coming. Down. He yeah. would still keep coming. We need this guy. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, okay, I, I can, I can see both arguments. You know, going back back at the time. You know, I can see both arguments. Yeah. I don't know. This made it up. You know, this, this back and forth made it all the way to William H. Taft, who was Secretary of War for President Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt. Nope. Taft, Taft, right. Taft would later become President of the United States. Um, but Taft decided, decided to make an example out of Carl, Carl, and he was dishonorably discharged, and he would serve time in Leavenworth, which was, at the time, was the toughest prison in the country. And... Carl was angry at Taft for this, and I will have my revenge <laughs> on Taft. Oh no! I'm sure at this point it, he, he's his, his voice isn't cracking anymore, so I can just go with the regular <laughs> Carl Panzram voice. There you go. All right, then. <laughs> so uh, the guards at Leavenworth would place bets on how long new arrivals would last, and none of them bet on Carl. <laughs> Right. Carl was 16 years old, and even though he was tough, the men there were rapists and murderers. And Carl, you know, Carl was in the big leagues now, but he showed he showed no fear, which had worked for him before, but not now. Yeah, not so much. The prisoners were divided into companies, and if one person in, in a company screwed up, the entire company was punished. Yeah. So. 
Carl would rebel, which made which meant bad things for everybody. And the other prisoners in his company, they weren't having it. So they would attack him and he fought back and he would get messed up pretty bad. But he was learning a new skill. Yeah. Br- brutality. Right. Because, you know. Yeah. Within a month, he was winning most of the fights. Oh, all right. <laughs> Within a month. Within a month. Okay. I still hate him, but that's okay. Yeah. Good for him. Then Carl earned respect from, from some of the prisoners. You know, after he was like, he's like, I'll take on all comers, you know. And I, <laughs> this motherfucker just won't go down. <laughs> and not in that I way, swear, pervs. I swear, I swear, I swear Carl and Boone Helm <laughs> would have gotten along. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. But Carl doubled down with his attitude towards the guards, but that got him beaten to within an inch of his life. Yeah. And the pris- the prisoners would have to, to finish Carl's workload when they finished there. So once again, he wasn't very popular with the prisoner. Not a popular man. <laughs> right. But it, But just wait. Put a knife in that. Oh shit. <laughs> the guards would put prisoners into straight jackets and tighten them tighten them to the point to where the prisoner passed out. This along with repeated beatings was a daily occurrence and I'm sure there's probably some raping too once they had passed out. There's always raping. Yeah. Some prisoners but some prisoners were starting to it's like it's like look at him. Yeah, you know, he's taking all this shit. So they, they would they would form around him, shielding from the guard's view, like protecting him. So it's like see, some of the prisoners are warming up to him. So once once again, he was gaining popularity from the, the prisoners because no matter how badly the guards treated him, he would get back up and be like, next? Is that all you got? Are you not entertained? <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> But he was ever defiant, and a year oh. into his sentence, he was every bit as strong as the Persis, the 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 person, the Persis, the, the 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 toughest man in the in the prison. <laughs> Persis, that's going in the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh he was uh, he was about three or four times stronger than the average American man at the time. He was basically the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Ugh. Several times the guards would beat him with batons and the baton would break. Carl, Carl, wouldn't <laughs> Carl wouldn't even flinch. He was just like, oh, there's mosquito on my back. What the yeah, fuck? Right? <laughs> you know? That's, oh my God. When Carl, anyway. when Carl first arrived, he was raped. And um, now he was seeking out the prisoners who had raped him, giving them a triple helping of a dish served cold. <laughs> It's very cold in space. <laughs> now he was what Pee Wee Gaskins called a power man. <laughs> and, he, and, and he actually felt free. So Carl, le- Carl left Leavenworth at the age of 19, eager to unleash holy terror on the world. And he was more of, than capable of doing just that. And that's where we're going to wrap up part one. Oh, Okay. You know, that was a, that was a good good place yeah. to wrap it up. Perfect spot. He just left Leavenworth, and he just really hates everybody at this point. <laughs> and he's about to, you know, he's about to unleash a, a one man reign of terror. Right on. Well, not right on, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, what do you think about this one going? You know, so far. I mean, I know, I know it's a it's a horrible story, but what do you what do you think about it as far as like a true crime story? Oh, it's a good one. I mean, it's like it's like, like you said. It's definitely uh, nurture, not nature. And um, uh, I mean, the yeah, I mean, fuck yeah! How to create a monster is a pretty good title for this. Yeah, exactly. Wow! And create and create a monster. They did. Yes, they did. And um, but but yeah, that was just. 
Yeah, it's just like I, I've wanted a Carl. I, I wanted a Carl. I wanted. To, <laughs> you wanted a Carl. I wanted. Bill, I thought you said the Bud Light wasn't doing anything to you. <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> that was a good one. I got to give you props for that one. That was a. Good one. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah. Anyway. But I usually don't do the shit after the episode. That's the first, I think that's the first time I've done that after the episode. I know, right? Because you're not reading notes. You're just talking now. <laughs> anyway. But it, but I, I've wanted to cover Carl Panzram for a while, but I knew that it was like a really long episode and everything. And it's just like, and to be honest with you, yeah, it's just like we, you know, this is another sign of us growing as a podcast. We used to be like, oh, we don't like doing two part episodes. Well, now we're doing a three part episode and I'm going to stop looking at it that way as doing a two part episode or a three part episode or maybe even sometime in the future a four part. Don't. If we, we cover, if we cover Jonestown. That's going to be at least a four part episode. <laughs> That'll be an entire month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just like I'm, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking at it differently, and everything because yeah, it's just like I'm getting better at writing these and telling the story, yes. you know, uh-huh. and and it's just like so a, a, a two part, a three part, or even a four part or whatever. It's gonna whatever be whatever it takes a lot. to tell the story, right? Right, right. So I mean, I, you know, some of the two point, you know, the the two the two point conversions. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, I was looking oh, at the, God, the game. <laughs> no, but some of the the, the two part episodes from before, I did a good job on, like Boone Helm. I did, I did a good job on that one. Yeah, but um, but some of them I didn't. BTK. Uh, <laughs> Don't listen to that one, by the way. Yeah, wait, wait till we redo it. Wait till we redo it. Yeah, we are going to redo <sighs> it. So, all right. Yeah. But anyway. Seriously, um, if you're hearing this on like Thursday or Friday or even Saturday or whatever, just, you know, like check our, check our socials and everything. If you're going to be at crime con, you know, like meet up with us and everything. We'd love to talk to you and everything. And, you know, it's like, if, I'm thinking more than likely we're going to do the, um, no, well, I don't, I don't know when we're going to do the, the recording. I have no idea. So, but. Just we're gonna announce all of it on the on the socials, and so but but so yeah we, you know we're we're winging all of that. So like it, and most people that That's are at crime statement. Con, yeah, most people that are at crime con probably aren't even gonna hear this episode until after crime con when they're going back home to wherever they live, or whatever. If they even listen, they listen. The numbers show that touchdown, Duffin. Oh, here we go. Time we kill. <laughs> anyway, but, um, I think it was Tyreek. Oh, let me watch the replay. <laughs> let me watch the replay. I saw Tyreek like cheering in the end zone, but he didn't have the ball in his hand. So let me see. Well, that probably wasn't him then, unless he spiked it. Nope, it was him. <laughs> so, um, Damn. but. But yeah, ser- seriously, just just keep up with that, and you know, just keep up with that stuff. We're we're definitely going to do that. We're going to have we have the you know we have a, another podcaster coming in with us to record an episode with us and all that stuff. It's just so we we've got some stuff going on that we're that we're kind of piecing together, even though we didn't do it, and you know, <laughs> even though we weren't invited. Yeah, but well, you know, we're we're new still. Yeah, well, as far as they get invited. Dude, human monsters even um, like applied to it, yeah. and they turned human. Down. So that doesn't make me feel good about our future anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like being invited to the crime con, if they turn down human monsters, yeah, that, that's that's one of the top dogs. <laughs> right. Well, we'll be one too soon. Yep. So anyway. Um, Anyway, you know, thanks a lot for listening and everything. You know, check us out on our socials. We've already done the socials and everything. They're they're all linked in in the episode description. Um, five star review and 
would be nice <laughs> and everything. You know, so far the only review that we have is the monotone one. <laughs> and so it's just like, come on, hook us up, people. Right. Yeah, serious. We're you not know, that bad. Like we, have, we, have a, we have a good core group of OGs. And I know, right? Hook us up on Apple. Well, maybe they only listen on Spotify or whatever, because you can't leave reviews on Spotify. Uh, yeah, this could be. Anyway, but um, until, I say anyway too fucking much, dude. Goddamn. Until next week, later. Cheers, everybody. 